Temsil Ao's novel, A Asanless Story, published by Zuvon, unfolds a distinctive narrative of defiance and harmony, imparting the lesson that self-acceptance can manifest unexpectedly. Ayasanla, the central character in this tale set in Nagaland, initially revels in her passion for education, yearning for intellectual growth. However, her aspirations are abruptly curtailed when familial aspirations for social ascent coerce her into an unwanted marriage with an older man of affluence. Despite Ayasanla's spirited resistance driven by her dedication to education, she finds herself overpowered by a family oblivious to her yearnings. What ensues in her life is a tumultuous odyssey, navigating through the challenges of a husband marked by infidelity and alcoholism, overbearing in laws, experiences of marital violation, familial negligence, integration into unfamiliar social circles, the birth of her two daughters, revelation of scandalous family secrets jeopardizing everything held dear, and the inevitable march of time. Throughout these trials, Ayasanla consistently engages in introspection, grappling with questions about her identity. The evolution of this self-discovery occurs subtly, with the protagonist seemingly unaware of when the process completes itself. Temsil Ao skillfully keeps readers captivated with every turn of the page, allowing them to closely accompany Ayasanla on her arduous journey of battling patriarchy, societal norms, cultural divides, family challenges, concealed truths, and internal uncertainties. In Ayasanla's story, the realization of self-acceptance unfolds unexpectedly, illustrating the novel's central theme. The narrative structure, however, presents a certain dissonance. Temsil Ao opts for a non-linear timeline, weaving through various points in Ayasanla's life. This unconventional approach occasionally leads to a sense of frustration, as crucial storylines are introduced and left unresolved for an extended duration. The eventual resolution of these subplots is often relegated to passing mentions much later in the narrative, causing a degree of disappointment. Conversely, certain narrative arcs leading to pivotal moments are prolonged excessively. The readers, akin to Ayasanla's constant companions, witness her evolution throughout the journey. It feels as though they, too, are acquiring wisdom and maturity alongside her, engrossed in her pursuit of positive change within her modest sphere. The narrative subtly reflects Ayasanla's transformation, progressing from the introduction of a vibrant, youthful girl at the story's outset. As the tale unfolds, readers are guided through her changing nature over time, culminating in the portrayal of an older woman who prioritizes analytical assessments of circumstances over emotional impulses. Ayasanla's story, though a work of fiction, intricately weaves themes that resonate closely with our lived experiences. The poignant revelation of Ayasanla's profound loneliness evokes a sense of heartbreak, prompting a fervent wish for her to discover a confidant in her new environment, away from her childhood home, amidst a husband and in-laws who, for an extended period, fail to recognize the remarkable woman she is. The narrative unravels Ayasanla's heartbreaks and concealed secrets, creating a yearning for her to share these burdens with someone. While she establishes a potential connection with the family physician, Dr. Kilong, and the town's benevolent figure, societal taboos hinder the development of a consistent relationship with a man who is not a family member. Beyond the portrayal of Ayasanla's personal struggles, the story delves into other pressing social issues, including child sexual abuse, teenage pregnancy juxtaposed with societal norms, the pervasive influence of gossip and secrets, domestic abuse, bullying, the societal pressure on married women to bear sons, and the painful experience of being neglected by one's own family. Ayasanla confronts these complex scenarios through negotiation, occasional acquiescence, and often through fierce resistance. While Ayasanla's story is a work of fiction, its exploration of these themes serves as a poignant reminder that the challenges and dilemmas faced by the protagonist are deeply rooted in the realities of our own lives. In the midst of adversity, Ayasanla's journey unfolds as a testament to the unexpected sources from which one can draw strength and empowerment. While she grapples with a series of unfortunate circumstances, she emerges not as a hapless victim or a saintly figure with an unwaveringly virtuous heart but as a resilient individual who learns the art of adaptation and manipulation as each situation demands. Despite the attempts of her in-laws, particularly the egoistic and hypermasculine Bendang, to erode her sense of self, Ayasanla refuses to succumb to bullying and tenaciously preserves her identity. Ayasanla's strength and fortitude gradually gain recognition from her family, even from Bendang, as they come to understand and begrudgingly admire the woman she is becoming. In the complex narrative of patriarchy, Ayasanla's story diverges from the anticipated conclusion. 
While there might be a lingering hope for a radical departure, a transformative act of walking away with her two daughters and abandoning the oppressive familial constraints, practical considerations of positionality and social environment constrain such a resolution. The story doesn't unfold with a dramatic departure but instead weaves a different tapestry, a narrative where, against the odds and within the realm of the unexpected, Ayasinla finds her own sense of fulfillment. In the grand mosaic of life's challenges, Ayasinla's narrative concludes with a subtle yet profound resolution. Within the labyrinth of unforeseen circumstances, Ayasinla emerges triumphant, coming into her own and embracing a happiness that is hard-earned and uniquely hers. At a tumultuous juncture marked by the clamor for women's empowerment and gender equality, Ayasinla's story emerges as a compelling and thought-provoking narrative, offering insights that can help dispel the uncertainty prevalent in the minds of those grappling with questions of equality and justice. Temsil Au, a highly esteemed and admired contemporary writer, weaves a tale centered around an Aonaga woman, delving into her personal journey from an early, forced, marriage to her struggles in fulfilling roles as a wife, daughter-in-law, and mother. This fictional narrative poignantly illustrates how traditions and customs can exert considerable pressure on individuals in what appears to be a modern era. Ayasinla's journey, as portrayed in this story, becomes a powerful exploration of the tension between tradition and the demands of contemporary life, providing readers with the confidence to navigate their own circumstances and assert control over their destinies. Interestingly ironic, the narrative paints a vivid picture of the male-dominated Naga society, particularly among the Ao tribe, deeply rooted in ancient traditions and superstitions. This observation is made with confidence by the narrator, who identifies as an Ao Naga lady herself. Drawing from personal experience, she acknowledges the fortunate upbringing in an environment where an educated and understanding family, despite occasional ignorance, shielded her from the pressures imposed by tradition and custom. The narrator and her sisters were nurtured to become strong and independent women, a sentiment echoed by many Naga women today. In contrast, Ayasinla's story unfolds as a poignant portrayal of the bitter experiences faced by numerous women, both historically and in contemporary times. Born into an underprivileged family, Ayasinla's narrative takes a tragic turn as she is coerced into marrying a wealthy man's son, portrayed as the black sheep of the family. The discomfort and helplessness experienced by the narrator, particularly as she identifies with Ayasinla's character, a meek and obedient wife, disrespected by her husband and his family, and burdened by the birth of two daughters against the fervent expectations for a male heir, presents a stark depiction of the challenges faced by women in oppressive social structures. The initial chapters of the book paint a somber yet accurate portrayal of the Naga society, grappling with the impact of entrenched traditions, customs, and superstitions. However, a sense of joy and optimism permeates the latter half as transformative shifts unfold. Ayasinla's metamorphosis from a naive individual into a determined, strong-willed woman, eager to assert her voice within both her family and society, marks a significant turning point. Equally noteworthy is the evolution in her husband's character, breaking free from the constraints of narrow perceptions. This transformation highlights the enduring influence of the older generation, symbolized by the baby boomers, on the attitudes and behaviors of the present generation, encompassing both Gen Zers and Millennials. In conclusion, the book emerges not just as a narrative but as a source of inspiration. It serves as a guide for those in search of their authentic selves and for individuals seeking liberation from insecurities and doubts. Most importantly, it becomes a beacon for those grappling with the delicate task of striking a balance between the weight of tradition and the evolving demands of the millennial generation. Through Ayasinla's journey, the narrative encourages readers to navigate their own paths towards self-discovery and harmony amidst the complexities of tradition and modernity. Commencing significantly with the delivery of a wedding invitation, the novel swiftly establishes a platform for scrutinizing the protagonist's own marriage, thus setting the narrative in motion. The focal point of the story is the remarkably strong-willed Ayasinla, the youthful spouse of a socially prominent figure, who grapples persistently with the harsh realities of her marital life. Ayasinla, an intelligent student with a penchant for literature and diverse music genres, hails from a highly esteemed Nagaland clan. However, due to her family's financial constraints, she finds herself wed against her wishes to an older, affluent individual whose clan status is inferior to hers. Ayasinla's initial refusal to consent to this marriage, which would bring disgrace to the groom's family, is overridden by her father's intervention. This detail is particularly significant, shedding light on the gradual shift from the dominance of clan status and honor to the growing influence of wealth in traditional societies. 
Despite her in-law's social standing, particularly her domineering mother-in-law, they remain acutely aware of their clan status, preventing them from fully asserting control over their educated daughter-in-law. Ayasanla, fortified by her knowledge of belonging to a more influential clan than her husband, seizes this moment as a crucial act of self-assertion. However, Ayasanla's pursuit of self-assertion does not shield her from unsettling experiences within the family. Despite her in-law's determined refusal to acknowledge her presence, she endeavors to assimilate the ways and manners of the affluent, seeking validation in the upper echelons of society. The futility of this effort becomes evident when she becomes a victim of verbal abuse and marital rape. Stricken to the core, the death of her son at birth becomes the catalyst for Ayasanla to renew her quest for self-discovery. Her connections with Kilong, the family doctor, and the arrival of her husband Bendangmaran's illegitimate daughter showcase Ayasanla's resilience, dignity, and quiet strength. She adamantly refuses to submit to the demands of social and marital expectations, persistently exercising her right to lead her life on her own terms. Ayasanla's transformative journey from self-doubt to self-realization assumes profound significance as she navigates the complex landscape of patriarchy, cultural barriers, and social taboos. Her emergence from the shadows of obscurity into a realm of self-awareness becomes a poignant testament to her strength and determination. As elucidated by Kalpana Bora Barman from Cotton University, Guwahati, Assam, the novel not only poses significant questions but also endeavors to challenge established societal norms. Easterine Kyer, in A Terrible Matriarchy, 2007 points out that girl children are often not considered genuine family members. Their societal role is predefined to marry, bear children, master domestic skills like cooking and weaving, and manage household affairs. Once married, they are perpetually recognized as someone's wife or someone's mother, never acknowledged as somebody's daughter 2425. Ayasanla's pursuit of knowledge in literature and music becomes a source of gratification for the reader, witnessing a young woman from the overlooked hills attempting to transcend her compromised position in the distant realm of Mokokchang. The reader accompanies Ayasanla through her journey, empathizing with her loneliness, grappling with her self-doubt, and recognizing the peculiar familiarity of her circumstances. Amidst her yearning to contribute meaningfully and make her true self known, the novel unfolds. In the concluding chapters, Ayasanla's odyssey extends beyond the domestic and mundane. Echoing Amy Tan's sentiment in, The Opposite of Fate, Memories of a Writing Life, 2001 The narrative emphasizes the power of choice in belief and memory, liberating individuals to hope. Ayasanla's story revolves around this sense of hope, giving voice to the subaltern existence and experiences of a woman compelled into silence and obscurity by prevailing socio-cultural forces. The plot primarily explores the spatial dynamics of individual relationships within society. Concepts of identity, contested subjectivities, and marginalization, mirroring everyday realities, are navigated with a sense of self-distancing. Ayasanla comprehends her truth subjectively, offering Ao's exploration of gendered conventions and ideological notions that shape the self on various levels. Ayasanla's resistance to prevailing practices of inclusion and exclusion serves as a manifestation of her empowered self. Through decisive actions, she gains the empowerment to live life on her terms, breaking free from the silence and passivity associated with her marginal status. 70-year-old Temsil Ao, a trailblazer in northeastern Indian literature, was honored with India's highest civilian award in 2007 for her contributions. Renowned for her volumes of poetry and short stories, Ao returns to her cherished Nagaland homeland in this book, presenting the intricately woven tale of Ayasanla, a woman on a journey of self-discovery. The narrative unfolds on a typical summer afternoon, gradually transforming into yet another stifling evening. Ayasanla sits, captivated by the sounds of her children playing nearby, overcome by a profound lethargy. Surveying the house that has been her home for countless years, she contemplates the inexplicable influence an inanimate structure like a house can wield over a human being. Holding a wedding invitation in her hands, Ayasanla is prompted to revisit her own wedding ceremony from years past, sparking a poignant reflection on the facets of life predetermined for her and those she has forged for herself.